Hello, everyone. Welcome to the round of 32. This is the summer side, uh, the summer series, sorry, of Contenders NA. We've got an amazing matchup for you today. It's Paradise versus Sleepover Party. I'm Joker's Ransom. He's dividing, and we're taking you here from the beaches of Castillo. Ah, oh, dividing. I'm so excited for this beach broadcast. Oh my gosh, it is a beautiful day here on the shores of Castillo, and we are here to watch some beautiful Overwatch tonight. Our field of 64 teams has been trimmed down by half to 32. Every team that has made it to this point has won at least one game. They can say they have won a game in contenders, and that means that the competition is going to get more and more difficult for teams like Paradise and Sleepover Park. Yeah, definitely is. Uh, a team like Paradise here is coming in with a lot to prove, really. Uh, there are a lot of tier three players uh, and tier two and a half, I'd say, of uh, a caliber of players looking to make their mark on this season of NA contenders. People like Sloth and Valencia were on best buds. If you remember that team from last uh, last year's open division that went on that amazing run. Can you um, believe that was a year ago yeah. at this point? It's like, crazy. And we only had one open division so far <laughs> this year. But, and then uh, we've got uh, Reverse and Goob as well. Uh, this team is looking really good. And we've got a new a new player, it looks like, coming to the scene within the side of Chronic as well. Yeah, super excited to see what Chronic can bring. And his real, uh, his real debut on the big stage, on the on the big screen. As far as I can tell, has never really been on a tier three team before today, but must have some skill to him if, if they were picked up alongside the rest of Paradise, who are very established tier three players. And this is a really good litmus test for them because when you look over on Sleepover Party, you see some familiar names if you're watching contenders uh, around this time last year. On the tank roll, of course, you've got Jishua, who was the starting main tank for Wisp a little while ago. You You've got Emma, aka Doggo, and she was on teams like Angry Titans a little bit while ago in the in, e, in the EU division. And then you've got people like Gunther, who was hanging around the uh, sort of contenders trial scene, who had the most success on Kratos a while back. There is a lot of contenders slash contenders trials experience on the team, and even though they haven't been there in a while, and I get the feeling that you know they aren't super super tryharding for it. Uh, it is going to be a really good test for Paradise, who I must say is ranked about nine seeds above Sleepover yeah. Party on, on the bracket. Yeah, and they didn't even get to talk about uh, the DPS line for Sleepover Party as well. Jazza and Glacial, they look to be a bit of a new newcomers to the contender scene, but they do have prior synergy. Uh, they've played on teams like Ignition prior to uh, this team. So they've got the synergy going forward. It should be really interesting to see how they can go forward as we start out on Nepal tonight. Super excited to start out on Nepal. I think we're going to get a wide range of, of maps here that will allow us to see uh, kind of the wide range of comps that have come in on this new patch this Overwatch 2 patch we really haven't seen until this contender's bracket. Of course, we have seen Junker Queen kind of dominating the meta so far. Uh, has been being played more often than not. That AOE shout, the heal and the uh, the heal and the speed boost does a ton to uh, really enable the rest of her team to push forward. Just play super well into brawl slash rush cons especially when paired with Alusia. yeah definitely as well um we did see a couple of nerfs coming through uh like you were saying uh, junker queen was just dominating everything and a little bit of a nerf coming coming through um as well as zenyatta's nerf as well but we're still probably going to see both of those two heroes they're still so dominant zenyatta with the discord or just without any shield is just so it's so lethal yeah, uh, it's it's almost a must pick when you're running a slower base composition um, with maybe a Sigma or something like that. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to see some great Zen play today, because I think you hit the nail right on the head. The fact that there's no shield in the Junker Queen comms, it's basically free value for Zen if you can find a safe place to get set up, set, get that Discord onto somebody. You can melt down Junker Queen super quickly and then get on to the rest of her team. Junker Queen's goal, of course, the Junker Queen comms, when we see it, is going to be to try and get in early with the Shout, with the Lucio Speed Boost, uh, try and get uh, the Brigitte Inspire set up. We see Brigitte most of the time with this comp, though. There is a little bit of variation here and there. I do want to say real quick before we get into the first map that, of course, even though this is kind of the meta that we're talking about here, this Brigitte, Lucio, Sojourn, most of the time Genji, and the uh, Junker Queen, we're still really early into the season, Joker. This is yeah. uh, by no means set in stone, and there's tons of room for teams to experiment. Yeah, and like you said, uh, this is a new patch. So, I mean, we're coming into this with teams scrimming on the old patch, which Junker Queen was broken, Zenyatta was broken. Uh, the little bit of the changes, we might see some evolving over time going forward. And we also haven't even talked about Moira getting that change to their damage orb. No longer the skill orb coming through and just chipping damage away. The necrotic orb, it's uh, it's a it's a whole different story and going forward. It's like forward. it's actually a skill orb now. Yeah. It, it, it flies faster and it's kind of more like a skill shot now. So when you say skill orb, it, it actually means skill, which is kind of crazy. You're not, you're not really expecting that uh, if you go off of the last year. Uh, and uh, both teams, jo Joker, have immediately locked in the Junker Queen as we're going to start off on Shrine. Yeah, uh, the one key difference we're seeing right now is Goob opting for the Moira here over the Lucia, or sorry, over the Zenyatta, um, as well as uh, Glacial having the Symmetra locked uh, just for the extra, uh, the quick teleport to the uh, spawn. Emma's actually sticking on to the Zenyatta here. Okay, this is an interesting comp because, like we mentioned, the Discord Orb is going to be really good for Sleepover Party as they uh, as they try and melt down the members of Paradise. But they are going to have to end these fights super quickly uh, and because eventually the improved healing of the Moira is going to take over. Yeah, they're going to come in starting this off with a nice play from Jishua to start things off, taking out Valencia, their counterpart Junker Queen to start things off, but it is going to be traded out. But still, Jishua finding so much value with Junker Queen right now, just dominating the scene. Three picks for the tank of Sleepover Party. That is exactly what you want to see. Emma stays alive for just long enough for Jishua to be able to melt down the opposing tank. Uh, with the assist from the Discord Orb. And after that, I mean, Jishua basically had free reign to take out the much squishier members of the team. And look at that Rampage Ultimate Charge already. Jishua basically tripling Valencia so far. Yeah, as uh, we see Paradise trying to come back. They've got this point control for the time being, but they're going to be running in yet again. Jishua looking to get something done, but no uh, sir coming through. It's going to be Chronic with a nice secondary fire onto Gunther, taking them out with a nice headshot as Chronic coming back strong, finding two picks of their own to open things up in the favor of Paradise. Chronic with three of their own. This is beautiful. We were talking about it before, Joker. Would the newbie Chronic be able to hold up in this lobby of Tier 3 and Tier 2 veterans? And if that uh, second fight has any indication of how things are going to go, I think we're going to be in for quite the show indeed. But a sleepover party, they have quite the show planned up for this next fight. Everyone is at least 78% of the way to their ultimates. They have nothing up at the moment, but Glacial's going to get that pulse bomb to help them push in. Will we be able to get that damage through the coalescence of Goop? That is the question, and who are they going to actually look to stick here as well? Oh, but Jezza with a nice shot to start things off for Sleepover Party, taking Goob out before they can use the Coalescence. The Transcendence on the board as well now for Sleepover Party. They've got everything they need to win this out as Jishua starts things off, taking Valencia out of this fight, and that should be all they need to win this fight. Chronic trying to do as they can, but they can only get one in that fight. My gosh, playing against Sojourn is so crazy because you see her from afar and she basically plays like a Widowmaker charging up the rail gun shots and is able to one shot you immediately if she gets a headshot. And then as soon as you try and pressure and she dives off, she 
is able to basically play like a close range tracer almost. You, you just get yourself a hero that can do both and it works out fantastically. Paradise was able to hang on to that Coalescence though for the re-engage here, as well as the blade from Sloth. Yeah, Sloth is gonna start things off, but they're gonna go into the sound barrier of Gunther there as they can't find any value. Emma is gonna go down there after the overclock is popped by Chronic. They find two, the supports are gone for the side of Sleepover Party, but there's still people sticking around for the side of Sleepover. But now it does look like Paradise are getting the upper hand. No one can stay along. It's just Glacia left on the point. Great distraction play there from the Sloth. Uses the blend and gets right into Gunther's face to try and force the beat out. Gets it exactly. And as soon as it fades away, that's when the overclock comes out from Chronic. And there's nothing that Sleepover Party can do to stop Chronic from headshot after headshotting away at the rest of the team. And now Sleepover Party, they really only have a pulse bomb from Glacial to work with anymore. And 70% in counting for Paradise, this could easily be the final fight, Valencia has the Rampage ready to try and open things up, get anti-heal onto three members of Sleepover Party. Yeah, and Valencia is going to start things off, taking Emma out, and that should just be all but over for Paradise here. They are going to be able to take three people out. Glacial does get the Pulse Bomb kill onto Sloth, but it's a little bit too late for anything to really change. Yeah, I mean, even a sleepover party is going to be able to get, it can get on and get a contest here. They really don't have very many ultimates. Jazza is the closest one to the overclock, but still 20% away and is going to have Ooh. to do it. Oh, okay. Jazza with a crucial pick on the goob. That's the main healer for Paradise. They might be able to fight their way back in this one. Yeah, and it does look like that's going to be the case. They're going to be able to get this point control as Jazz is going to pop the overclock. Look to get some picks with the secondary fire. And there it is. Valencia wow. is down. What a play coming in from the sojourn of Sleepover Party to take this fight and get it back into their favor. It is this last fight territory for both of these fight teams as Sloth is going to try to change it. But the transcendence is there from Emma to keep the damage from really doing anything as the side of sleepover party are trying to finish this off just with with two this should be all but over round one goes in the favor of sleepover party what a clutch play from Jazza at the end of that fight. I had written that off completely as a win for Paradise, but with one right click onto the head of Goop, Jazza is able to turn things around completely, and Sleepover Party is able to take Shrine. And Joker, I really feel like this has been a tale of two Sojourns so far, one round into the game. Jazza and Chronic are just constantly trading blows. Yeah, you're definitely right there, as uh, whenever one is slacking, the other one picks things up. And it's no one has really gotten the better of the other. They've both had amazing plays, and uh, that's going to continue going in here onto uh, Village. We still see both teams running their separate variants, right? Emma's going to be going on to the Zenyatta and Glacial on the Tracer. So again, Sleepover Party want to be playing ridiculously aggro with this one, and it works immediately as you catch off Sloth. And without that damage dealer, look at Paradise. They've been locked out of the middle portion of the map entirely. This could just be first point control for Sleepover Party right then and there as they wait for their Genji to return. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to get back there as uh, Sleepover Party are pretty much just guaranteed this this first point capture. They're going to try to get in. Sloth has swapped over to the Tracer now, but ooh, they do get the touch before the point goes into the favor of Sleepover Party here. They're so they still have an opportunity to get through, and they're going to be able to take Emma out of that fight as this should be opening things up for the side of Paradise now as they're gonna go forward and they're not gonna find anything yet. It's still even all around, but Jazza coming through with a disruptor shot as this now opens things up for Sleepover Party to come back strong and get the point back into their favor. It's just Valencia left on the point and they have to deal with them quickly if they wanna get it, um, the point back into their favor. Yeah, but it was a really good play from Paradise. Put so much quick pressure on the Sleepover Party. Thanks. Um, in large part, the Sloth, who I think swapped over the Tracer just to try to get back into the fight quickly, but ends up building up a Pulse Bomb in one fight because he was able to get so much value out of that pick. And now, all of a sudden, I mean, Paradise was able to take first point control and what could have been 30% counting for Sleepover Party is now about 15-20% for both sides. 
as uh, they're gonna come through here yet again sloth is looking for this pulse bomb both disruptor shots have been used but emma emma with three oh my goodness the bloodthirsty support for sleep over party is not to be outdone by their dps counterparts Doa would be so proud of you, Emma. So proud of what you were able to accomplish on the Zenyatta. Like, by no means should this be working as well as it does. In theory, uh, the superior healing of Paradise should be able to eventually pull ahead in these fights. But when you have a third DPS player on support like Emma, uh, it, it's a lot easier to be able to sustain through these fights. The Transcendence is going to be popped here and in counter to... Um... Uh, uh, the coalescence coming in from paradise. Nothing. Uh, this fight's just kind of waiting to go through. As Chronic used this uh, the overclock, but they're not going to find any value. It's going to be Jazza finding their value with their own overclock to open things up into the favor of Sleepover Party as they win this fight out yet again. I feel like Paradise are looking a little bit uncomfortable here. I'm not sure if it had to do with the uh, Sloth uh, Tracer pick, because it seems like individually Sloth is getting a lot of value, but uh, Paradise as a whole, the rest of the team, doesn't seem to be uh, super comfortable playing around the Tracer and playing around the Tracer's positioning and her picks. Uh, it just feels like even though Sloth is able to get a pick every fight, no one else from Paradise is able to really follow up on it. Yeah, it's definitely very difficult for them right now as they're going to try to get in here. Uh, they've got this uh, kind of the point control. They're going to use the sound barrier here. Jazza going to get anti up, and that's going to be huge as Goob takes out Jishua. This is the opening Paradise need to find all the picks they need to get back into this fight. Yeah, but it's going to take a perfect defense from this point forward to bring us to a deciding round three. And Paradise used just about everything in their arsenal to try and get themselves back into this one. Goob might be able to get Coalescence later into the fight, but Sleepover Party has the beat from Goon Theory. They have a, the Transcendence from Emma coming up soon, and they're just going to use this beat and run down Valencia. Yeah, and that's going to be huge going forward. No more tank on the board for the side of Paradise as uh, Sleepover Party, all they need to do is walk in, taking out Sloth now. The, the backline damage is gone. Chronic is trying to make a hero play here, and they need it to be big as uh, they do get some people back, but Jazz is taking out Chronic now. This should be all but over. The Coalescence and Transcendences are on the board for both of the sides. The swap over to the Wrecking Ball, but it's not going to be enough because they're going to go off the point dividing as Sleepover Party takes map number one. And what a fascinating, uh, what a fascinating comp from Sleepover Party. <laughs> uh, I was really hoping to see that play in the game. It was a Junker Queen play. I wanted to see that. But uh, anyways, a really fascinating uh, comp variation we saw there from Sleepover Party. We talked before about how the Junker Queen comps seem to be the meta, but the comp we were talking about before might not be the meta that we end up landing on. And Sleepover Party seems to have found a variation that works very well for them. The Zenyatta and Tracer allows them to run basically an ultra aggressive version of the Junker Queen Brawl designed to melt down uh, members of the other team as fast as humanly possible. And Paradise were caught off guard more often than not. Yeah, definitely. When you can have that um, that coordination between your Zen and Tracer, just be able to go in and, you know, and call the uh, the Discord and go in, get the kill as immediately as uh, quickly as possible, and then come back out. Uh, just, I mean, you, you can't really do much about it. I mean, and it, it showed, like you said, uh, Sleepover Party just dominated with that yeah. composition. Uh, there were, it was, it wasn't, I don't want to say a dominant, but it was definitely better than what Paradise was running with the, um, with the Moira variant. Yes, and it, it definitely, the Moira variant, there's definitely some value to it as, for Moira as a healer, though we have been seeing Brigitte more often in these cases because, uh, she can, she's really good at functioning as a second support slash kind of a tank uh, if you're able to get rally uh, sorry not rally inspire up and have that aoe healing going on constantly uh, and then focus mostly on peeling for whoever is in danger it works it could work pretty well uh you know the moira was an interesting experiment but didn't really see much value come out of the necrotic orb uh, but 
Um, who knows what they have up their sleeves for the next map? It seems like they might be swapping up a little bit because we're going to King's Row. Yeah, and, you know, it's going to feel weird. We're not going to see old Brawl on King's Row here. Uh, it's 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 well, the dilemma of going into Overwatch 2 with only one tank, not going to see a Reinhardt Diva any longer. But we're going to still pro most likely see a Brawl like we saw previously with yeah. that, uh, like we saw in Nepal. I mean, I'll be honest, I have seen teams run a Reinhardt Brawl variation. At least the closest thing we can get to Overwatch 1 Brawl in Overwatch 2. It usually is a Rhine, uh, and instead of a Brig or a Moyer, you have a Baptiste. And instead of the Genji or a Tracer, you have a Mei. Uh, that is probably what... Um, that's probably what Paradise are trying to get at with this King's Row comp. You want to try and force Sleepover pa Party to play a composition that maybe they're not quite as comfortable with, a composition that's maybe a little more niche. Um, and I think that might be what Paradise is going for with this comp. Or maybe they just like King's Row because everyone likes King's Row. And that yeah. just might be it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's still, even though we're in a completely different game, uh, it's still a very comfort map, uh, and it's still a comfort map for most of the, uh, most of the people. Um, they call it Scrim's Row for a reason, I mean, if, uh, yeah. you're not, uh, I mean, people scrim it too much, maybe, um, yeah. in my, Listen, my opinion. Listen, if you go into a scrim, and you're playing for two hours, and you don't play King's Row, personally, I, I go to bed that night feeling like something's missing, right? I feel like there's, there's like an empty hole in my chest where King's Row should be. And luckily, I won't have to do that today because we are going to be seeing it. Indeed, indeed, and I believe we're just waiting for some uh, some changes in the lobby. But I mean, I I still can't wait to continue to go forward. Joshua yeah. has just been putting on a a clinic, I think, uh, pretty much of the new uh, the new Junker Queen. Uh, they've been able to play it almost to perfection uh, from what I've seen so far. Uh, hopefully, they can, as they continue going forward, they continue to run it the way it is meant to be run. I'm also uh, really interested to see... Um, we haven't, we don't have any information. I'm curious to see if Paradise are going to put in any subs uh, right now. Uh, Valencia, I think, didn't play necessarily bad in that last map, but was very easily sort of taken advantage of by the nature of the sleepover party comp. Valencia was usually the default rush target, and there just wasn't enough healing available to bring that jungle queen back. You look on the bench of this team, and you've got uh, people like Cyber, people like Today, who are maybe more of the main tank mains. Mm -hmm. Kai was more of an off tank when they were on best buds. So uh, when you move on to King's Row, and if you plan to go on to Reinhardt, Maybe there's a swap there. Maybe not. It's looking like not. It is still going to be Valencia and Paradise. Well, they still have time to change things up uh, because they are going to be starting off on attack. But Sleepover Party is saying if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We talked about the Rhine. We led up to the Rhine. Sleepover Party still running the same old Joker Queen comp that brought them so much success in the pub. Yeah, uh, and... Um... They're going to be running into, uh, oh, uh, I can't really speak on Paradise yet, but it does look like they're going to be running with the uh, the May variant like we were talking about instead of the Genji. Uh, but it, it'll work well just be able to uh, get them uh, as close as possible to uh, Valencia's uh, axe there and uh, see how it works going forward. I mean, they've got the time to switch okay. if they need be. This is an interesting little play. Sloth using the May wall to get people on top of that double decker bus so they can get easy access to the higher floor of the theater and quick uh, rotation here to this high ground. How are Sleepover Party going to respond? Because this rotation has been huge and Chronic is on the Widow. Yeah, well, Sloth doesn't matter because uh, they've taken taking out the headshot from across the map as ooh, Emma tried to respond with a nice volley into the head of Sloth. But right now, Paradise have the upper hand. They're ticking up and not going to be really uh, contested for the time being. They're going to now just get back in, trying as they will for uh, to stop this progress of Paradise at the moment. But right now, 
Uh, Paradise is just looking so dominant on this attack as uh, it's looking very difficult for Sleepover Party to get any value right now as Glacial going down, Sloth finding so much value with the May, oh. finding three picks in this as an immediate capture comes in for the side of Paradise. I mean, when you're just hitting every right click like that, a May can do just about as much damage as a Tracer or a Genji. Sloth already 65% of the way to that Blizzard. Glacial is actually going to swap to a May of, of his own and is going to retain 30% of that uh, ultimate turret because of the new DPS passive. That's kind of fun to see in action here, uh, but still significantly behind Sloth. It got so much value out of that May. And we have sort of a, it's interesting. It's kind of it, a modernized version of this traditional brawl with still, it's still about the May wall sectioning people off and then engaging on the people that get separated from the rest of the team. But this time it's Junker Queen making sure that you put in enough damage to secure the kill. Yeah, as uh, Sloth is getting a bit overzealous, almost paid for it with uh, their uh, life there, as now the side of Sleeper of a Party are going to be able to come in strong. Jazza finding two of their own. Valencia going to get an exit kill onto Gunther, uh, but uh, they're going to get staggered out for the time being as uh, Sleep of a Party come back strong with a nice fight win. Yeah, now Sleepover Party will likely be able to hold at this archway. Actually, no, they're actually going to hold back a little bit further, try and hold at the library instead. Uh, and this makes sense because you look at the AoE ultimates the Sleepover Party have available to them. Glacial is going to have that Blizzard available. Emma has the Transcendence to respond against the Blizzard from the other side. Goob doesn't have the same thing. This is a huge advantage for Sleepover Party. And the, both, uh, both blizzards have come out, but like you said, there's no uh, support ultimate to keep people up and healthy as Jazza's taken out Sloth now, as this is going to be another fight win for the sleepover party. Yeah, very quick fight win as well. The, uh, I guess the silver lining here on this one is that Paradise only ended up using the blizzard in that fight, so they're still gonna have the overclock, the beat, and the rampage to use to try and finally get this half the second quarter. Rampage now online, getting everyone lined up, but no one's gonna fall down, as it's gonna be Jazza with the overclock taking out Gubia again. It's just so much value coming in from these uh, uh, Sojourn ultimates from Jazza. Yeah, and again, it just feels like Sleepover Party isn't getting punished for running such a low healing composition. It feels like it should be fairly easy to uh, section off maybe Emma or Gunther or someone, one of the supports who really isn't getting much healing other than the healing that uh, the Lucio is giving them and be able to pick them off. But Sleepover Party is just doing such a good job of healing for each other and outputting so much damage that Paradise can't even think about getting a pick. To come in here with the engage from Valencia, but they do, and they do get, they get Emma, which is huge going forward. Jeshua trying to turn it back. They've taken out Chronic, but it's not, it looks like it's gonna be a little too late as Jeshua's just so low, but they're gonna have to pop one of their abilities, stay alive for the time being, but they're still Eight not health? looking like they're gonna win, but oh my goodness, Jeshua is gonna get Ooh, out. Get to the so health pack. Jeshua now at uh, a little more health, uh, 75 plus eight, do the math, I can't right now. Uh, but uh, it's going to finally get the healers back and that is some yummy ult charge for Emma, who's going to have that transcendence available for this next fight. Goob has a coalescence as well, but comparing those two ultimates, Emma seems to come out ahead, especially when you see Glacial is about to come up on that blizzard. And yeah, they're gonna pop it early on here after the disruptor shot used from Chronic but it does not look like there's gonna be much people going down to it as uh, Valencia was gonna get healed up immediately from that Coalescence, but Glacial with a nice right click taking out Sloth is gonna start things off into the favor for the side of Sleepover Party, but Emma going down as well. It's still even all around now, reverse out of this fight as it does look like Sleepover Party wins this out. Yeah, and now this is so tough because Paradise got it so close to the end of second point, but weren't able to finish things off. Their spawn point is so far away. It's going to take them a little while to be able to fully reset. And they decided they don't want to fully reset. They're just going to try and do this right now with the blade. 
Yeah, and they're gonna use the blade, but it's gonna be countered out immediately by Gunther with the sound barrier as Jazza yet again with the overclock finding a headshot kill. As he's just been popping off throughout yeah. the night with the Sojourn. We talked about how Chronic and Jazz are really sort of trading blows in the first map, but this time around, was that a sneak a little teabag we saw from Gunther? A very classy one, just a single tap of the control key. I like it, I like it. Uh, but yeah, Jazz and Chronic were kind of trading blows uh, in the first map. This time around, it really seems like Jazza has been getting much more consistent value out of that Sojourn, and Paradise used the beat in that last map, in that last fight, uh, sorry, the blade in that last fight, to try and uh, turn it, and now they don't have it for this final fight. They will have the Rampage from Valencia and the Beat to try and push things across, but Glacial is once again on that Blizzard. I feel like I've said that 10 times at this point. Yeah, it definitely seems that way, as Valencia is going to start things off with a huge place coming in, finding two picks. This should be Paradise winning this fight out and getting through to the checkpoint to get some new lease on life. So clutch from Valencia. Glacial was 2% away from the Blizzard. Could have turned that fight around if they would stay alive for just a little bit longer. But the nice focus fire from Paradise is able to take that key player out of the game and open up the final segment of King's Row. Minute 15, not a ton of time to push things forward, but every meter you can get at this point is, uh, is a blessing. Yeah, as uh, the May alt is going to start things off for Glacial, but everyone does seem to be able to kite away from it as Paradise are going to get in the upper hand, but now it's traded out two for two, but there it goes. Sloth on the Genji, finding the value that they need, getting everything going now into the favor of Paradise. Paradise, all of a sudden we blink and they are knocking on the doors of a full completion. Sloth has the blade ready, but of course Emma is immediately ready with the Transcendence to block it. It feels like this Zenyatta has had that Transcendence available every single time Sloth has the blade up. Uh, but Chronic is also going to be pretty close. Oh, you actually get Jishua before the Transcendence comes in. That's huge. That is huge indeed, as they're going to find two picks off the back of it, and no one's going to even be able to touch the point there as Paradise wow. capture all three points after almost not even completing point two. I know. I, I thought for sure that based off of how consistently Sleepover Party was able to at least slow down Paradise on point B, that they'd be able to finish things off with only a minute or so on the clock as Paradise was rounding the first corner on point C. But once they had taken point B, Paradise really put their foot on the gas and just forced Sleepover Party on the back foot. It seems like they were never able to fully... Uh, to fully reset and set up a fight that they felt uh, comfortable in. And that's what we need to be seeing from Paradise. They need to be the one setting the tempo and catching Sleepover Party off guard. Until that point, it felt like it was the other way around. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I mean, that's 95% of the game, uh, I'd say. Uh, keeping it the, the entire tempo in your favor. I mean, obviously, there's uh, that, that's just an arbitrary percentage. But uh, keeping the tempo in your favor is just so huge to get uh, as much value as possible. And you, you're able to dictate fights and how things go forward. And I think when we, once we saw that happen for Paradise, everything changed. Everything changed when Paradise attacked. And Paradise <laughs> is now on the defense here. They did get the finish. So if they can stop Sleepover Party at any point in this map, they will tie up the series. Yes, indeed, as we're going to start things off yet again, going in for a little, uh, just, no one's really starting things off. Now the fight is underway, and it's going to be Jazza. Who else to start things off for Sleepover Party as, oh my goodness, this guy is just insane on the Sojourn, fighting three yet again in this fight. Uh, the Sojourn and Prodigy, that was looking so favorable for Paradise as well. They kind of had Sleepover Party backed up into a corner. They had interrupted the rotation out of them, but then Jazza just gets one shot off with the Railgun, gets one kill, and things change on a dime for them so quickly. And just as quickly as Paradise had taken the first point on their attack, Sleepover Party has responded with 
the same. And because Paradise were able to put so much damage onto the team, look at the support ultimates. Guther and Emma are significantly ahead of Reverse and Goop. Yeah, uh, as they're gonna go forward here, uh, as the they start things off, yeah, again, but it is gonna be Chazza. <laughs> Who else but Chazza to start things up for the side of Sleepover Party to get things underway and win them that fight? I mean, you really need Chronic to start stepping up here and taking the Sojourn duel a little bit uh, more, a little bit more directly here, because it feels like Jazza has been kind of been getting left alone for the most part, uh, kind of hoping that they've kind of been trying to take out Jishu and said go after the front line, but every time you do that, Jazza gets left alone, and Jazza is super good at finding these picks. You notice the Chronic is actually a little bit ahead in the ult charge, but Jazza has way more final blows. Yeah, as uh, the Blizzard does come out, but does not find the value that you're hoping for. The uh, Sound Barrier out as it's gonna engage and on to the rest of Paradise, who is still alive. Jishu uh, with two there in that fight, and that's gonna wrap things up yet again for Sleepover Party. I mean, this train has not stopped since the spawn doors unlocked for Sleepover Party. Five minutes and 40 seconds to finish this map, and three ultimates coming up in just a moment once Yeshua gets that last 20% to the rampage. Jazza with the overclock has been lethal just with the normal railgun shots. What is going to be able to do with this one? Yeah, the overclock coming on board. Gonna be uh, everyone's hiding. They've learned <laughs> from Jazza Funny. at all costs as uh, they're not gonna find much value with it. all the space. Yeah, it, it's, all the space is being created just because of how dominant Jazza has been. The Transcendence now out from Emma, the Rampage there from Jeshua to find the space for Sleepover Party. They're just gonna be pushing them back. The Coalescence is there, but now Jeshua overly aggressed and goes down as the side of Paradise come back strong, finding all the picks they need. Great stuff there from Paradise. They did take both support ultimates from them, but they were able to sustain through the heavy attack from Sleepover Party using every ultimate that was in their arsenal. And now finally, after a huge start to the game, after a huge start to their attack, it feels like Paradise can take a second to breathe. They have the ultimate advantage for the first time. They have the Blizzard and the Rampage with Sleepover's nothing. Uh, so. Theoretically, Paradise should be able to get a second fight win in this one and start to build up a little bit of a win streak here. Get their confidence back. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult, though. Uh, Sloth has this uh, Blizzard online, but Blizzards haven't been really finding the value that we've seen previously. As um, they're going to look to get this going forward. Um, both Maywalls have been out, but it is going to be the Junker Queen trying to take out Glacial. The Blizzard has been gone, but yet again, the Blizzard not finding any value on the board. Sides have been traded two for two, but it's not thanks to these ult that ultimate, as Krotic is going to fight two in this fight now. It looks like the side of Paradise have opened things up into their favor. Krotic trying to be not outdone by their Sojourn counterpart. Yeah, great stuff there from Chronic. Was able to get on a sneaky little flank around Sleepover Party. They were not expecting to show up right behind him on the rafters and uh, picks up three or four kills in that fight. 80% now to another overclock, but Jazza is not very far behind. Uh, the ultimates for this one are pretty even, but every fight here is another minute taken off of the Sleepover Party time bank. Yeah, and... It's gonna come through yet yeah, again as of lunch. It does go into the back line, but they get a huge anti's going forward. Honestly, Bover Party is still traded one for one right now as Jazz and Chronic both finding value with the secondary fire. As now, there goes the overclock. Yeah, again on the board. Both of them being popped, but it is gonna be Chronic finding the upper hand with the ultimate ability as Emma goes down and wins wow. that fight yet yeah, again for Paradise. Jazza found the headshot on the goob as well, but was able to sustain through it. Great peel there from Paradise. And Sleepover Party once again have find themselves in a situation where they don't have a ton to work with. They have the Transcendence from Emma. Jishu was kind of close to that rampage, but still not a ton of tools to work with. But Paradise don't have very many as well. When these neutral fights, Sleepover Party seem to come out ahead. Two minutes left on the clock, though. Over half of that five-minute timing they had initially is gone. Joshua 
oh my goodness, is saved by some ma uh, some miracle from the supports of Sleepover Party there. The Blizzard now on the board, and they're going to be able to take out Jishua. It is looking good for this uh, defending squad in Paradise coming back and getting this fight win yet again. Oh my gosh, Paradise might just be pulling off the defense of a lifetime once they started building up that iron defense. Now it is an unbreakable barrier. Even though Paradise doesn't have any barriers, that sleepover party can't seem to break through no matter what ultimates they try to use. Um, less than 90 seconds on the clock now and Sloth is in trouble. Yeah, they're gonna have to use this Rampage to a perfection here, and it is gonna be huge going forward. Jishua with a massive ultimate is gonna open things up for Sleepover Party to move this cart forward. Great stuff there. But you lose Go you lose Gunther earlier in that fight. Lucio's probably gonna be back pretty quickly, but Sleepover Party does lose the ability to really engage like they want to in this Zenyatta composition. It's gonna give Paradise a little more of an opportunity to get back. Maybe not if they're frozen. Yeah, the Blizzard is finally going to find some value on this attacking phase for Sleepover Party, as this is just all but over now, as that is going to be a nice capture for Sleepover Party. That is an impressive third point hold, though, from Paradise. They held him there for over four minutes. I thought this was going to be a blowout, and we swapped the checkpoint from point B to point Z, and we saw that... Uh, Sleepover Party had over five minutes on the clock. The fact that they were able to hold up that corner for so long and give themselves a much better chance at winning this map and bringing us to a one and one tie shows that there is quite a bit of fight still left in Paradise. Yeah, uh, I mean, and with that amazing defense of Paradise, it's now uh, almost even, uh, like you were saying. Yeah. Uh, and now they 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 they're going to be able to have a much more chance of bring it even like you were saying and i'm really excited to see how this goes forward cuz both of these two teams had an amazing first point attack yeah uh if they can shore things up it's going to be whoever wins uh, if they can whoever shores up their first point defense is going to definitely take this Ooh. as Jeshua Hello. is going to be locking the Reinhardt baby oh my goodness i can't this wait this is definitely the uh, what one minute hold strategy that we wanted to see from Sleepover Party. Jishua on the Reinhardt, Emma on the Moira, hiding that Reinhardt for as long as possible, trying to make sure Paradise uh, doesn't know quite what they're up against. And it is going to be a massive shield that's going to be a huge detriment in the way of Chronic and Sloth to try and get value out of their right clicks. Uh, Jishua is walking forward here trying to swing the hammer but there's so much pressure coming out from Paradise at the moment they can't really find the value like but it is who but WB Jazza yeah again finding so much value wow. uh, for the side of sleepover party and it ends so quickly. Paradise has no chance to build up any ultimates in this next fight. They've got to win this one dry with no tools available to them. Same thing for Sleepover Party, but Jazza seems to be consistently coming through in these situations. Uh, Jishua almost uh, was out of position there, but they're going to be saved by their own Maywall. But it's going to be Ooh. Chronic starting things off with a nice secondary fire onto Gunther to open things up. For uh, the side of Paradise, they're going to walk forward. They've gotten a point cap. That is huge going forward. Because now they have the chance to win. They're not going to be, uh, there's no chance of tying any longer. And it is going to be Paradise finding everything they need. Jeshua is out of this fight. And they're going to be able to capture all three checkpoints and open the cart up yet again. Joker, I hate to say this, but I think we might just be watching why Ryan isn't gonna be meta for the next little bit. Yeah. Just seems like Valencia on this Junker Queen is able to use the shout and with that increased health and speed boost is able to just run down and focus down Jishua. Doesn't matter if you have a big shield if everyone's right in your face. Jazzo with a nice shot coming through. Chronic is gonna turn it back. The shatter comes out as well. From the side of Sleepover Party, that is going to be all, but it is just the Moira left. 
for Paradise, and no one's going to be able to touch. But that could be all they need here, Dividing, to win this map out. First of all, super pretty shot there from Jazz to start things off and get a quick early pick off onto a crucial member of paradise from that point forward it was just unloading all the ultimates to make sure you can end it right there but you put it pretty well there when you said that paradise may have gotten what they needed not only were they able to take first point but they were able to move cart pack past that all important archway that is an incredibly strong defensive hold spot uh, where now paradise essentially has two chances here to hold, hold them on first point and then if they're losing first point get out quickly and reset for a final fight at archway because that choke point is so difficult for the attackers to get through especially if it's kind of a vertically challenged composition like sleep over party is likely going to run yeah definitely um but we can't forget um, how dominant Sleepover Party's first uh, attack of the point was. Um, but, well, I mean, we can't really speak on their uh, their comp right now, but it's going to be completely... It's looking, like, completely different than uh, what we've seen from them previously. Yeah. Uh, and, but it... Oh, it looks like we're going to stick with it. I mean, Jazz is going to go in for one shot. That's no uh, surprise here. Chronic has been doing the same, but Sleepover Party is going to keep on running with the Reinhardt here. They're thinking that this is going to be uh, the adjustment they need to take a 2-0 lead in the series. And Sloth just getting out of there with their life, thanks to their own Maywall. Uh, but they are still super low, and they're going to go down first in this fight. That is huge going forward. There's no more Maywall, no more slowing on the board for Paradise. Um, as this does look to be in the upper hand of, uh, Sleepover Party, but no, Chronic is going to get a nice secondary fire onto Jazza, um, so to trade things out, it's still anyone's point at the moment, um, as they just need another pick, and whoever can get it is most likely going to win this fight out, as oh, Josh Dishua. Dishua is so low, and they're going to go down reverse, he's going to get that pick, and this time bank is going down so low. It's down to 20 seconds here dividing. It's 98% for Sleepover Party, but they can't quite make it. 10 seconds left on the clock. They've got to quickly reset and get back into this one. Sleepover Party are going to have both support ultimates available to try and engage back onto this point, but Chronic has the overclock. Yeah, they're going to pop it early on. They, if they can find a headshot kill onto someone, that is going to be huge. But it's going to be Gunther finding the first pick in this fight. Reverses out before they can get up to the sound barrier. And that's going to be all the difference in this fight. There's no sound barrier on the board for Paradise. And that's going to, as Sleepover Party takes this fight in the end. Oh my goodness, and now Paradise have got to rush back to the archway for what is now going to be the final, final fight of the map. And Sleepover Party only used the Coalescence in that one, which means they still have the beat. Jishua has the Shatter, Glacial and Jazzar win 10% of their ultimates, and Paradise has bad spawns. They had to use their Lucio to get back to the point. They're rushing to even get back in time. Yeah, and they're going to be walking into everything. Emma swapped over to the BAP as well as Jazza starts it off yet again with a headshot onto Goob. That is all but over, it seems, for the side of Paradise. Says they're going to use this, uh, they're going to use the Blizzard. And they find two of their own here. Jishua is still swinging the hammer, and that's all they're going to need. It's just one person left <laughs> free for the Reinhardt. It's Sleepover Party. Take the map. My goodness. Well... You know, maybe, maybe Reinhardt does have a spot in the meta after all. Maybe when Big Rectangle Man has that hammer and is just standing on top of the point and cannot be denied, maybe there's something to that. Because no one in Overwatch, from the beginning of Overwatch, can take a spot and hold it and be an immediate threat quite like Reinhardt. Yeah, and it definitely was the butter tank for that last fight uh, right there. And like you were saying, you're on the point and you're uh, able to take just so much space with just swinging that hammer. It's just so much damage. So, and then the, uh, the Earth Shatter can just change the fight as well.
as a uh, sleepover party are just looking so dominant. Uh, they're looking a lot more uh, susceptible to, uh, to these comps that Paradise are running now, but uh, right now they're on a uh, match point. They're on series point and they're looking to move forward into the round of 16 after this next map. Yeah, sleepover party so close to pulling off the 3-0, stamping their ticket to the top 16 and finishing off what would be a pretty significant upset, at least if the Battle Pie seedings have anything to say about it. But when you look at the experience that the members of Sleepover Party have, you don't think it's that surprising. There is a ton of contenders experience among the ranks of Sleepover Party that Paradise just hasn't quite hit yet. But again, this is a team with a lot of potential, with a lot of expectations, and they were a lot closer to figuring out how to play against the sleepover party comp in that map two than map one. They might just be able to turn this one around. Yeah, uh, they might be indeed. As we're going to head to a short little break, you're not going to want to miss the conclusion of this series, so stick around.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you didn't miss us too much, as now we're heading into one of the new maps of Overwatch 2. We're heading in to Circuit Royal for the, uh, what could be the end of the series. Sleepover Party are up 2-0. This is their match point. This is their series point. This is the round of 16 point here dividing. Listen, Joker, I know it's spelled royal, but I feel like royale just fits better. It just, it, it sounds better. It rolls off the well, tongue. It sounds better, but uh, hey, the, the Overwatch League people said it's Circuit Royal, so I'm calling it Circuit Royal just to annoy dividing and the production. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope you understand, chat, that every time Joker says Royal, our producers in our ear going Royale. It's Royale. Uh so uh that's gonna be fun to listen to for the rest of the for the rest of this map. But uh moving on, of course, to the implications of this one. I feel like we haven't established yet that this is a single elimination bracket until we reach a top eight, which means Paradise is one map away from contenders elimination. They have to turn things around quickly and that by going with Circuit Royale, they have, uh, they have indicated that they want to make a massive change in the comps run. Circuit Royale is really good uh, for the sort of slower pokey comps that play around the Sigma. That's something we haven't really seen yet, and I think Paradise is hoping that Sleepover Party aren't quite as versed in that as the Brawl variants. Well, uh, they're gonna want to leave their cards on the table, if you will. <laughs> Let, uh, that, you know, uh, that's a zinger, a one-liner for you, for you there. Um, as, um, I mean, hey, it's... Paradise needs to do something, like we keep saying. This, yeah. the, the, uh, this is elimination, uh, and uh, this is a good map to change it all up on. Because, like you said, the, the, normally you don't see Junker, uh, Junker Queen rush on this map. Yeah, it's just really difficult with the the big U turn at the first part of the map, and then the massive hill you have to climb at the second part of the map. It just lends the map geometry just lends itself a lot better to mid to long range poke comms, which is why Sigma is so strong here. He has the most flexible shield in the game, so it's really easy uh, for him to be able to uh, uh, put out the shield, recall the shield, rotate to somewhere else, depending on where the neat team needs it. Uh, you'll probably be playing slower supports like the Zenyatta, so it's going to be um, really crucial that the Sigma is trying to uh, support and defend that Zenyatta as much as possible, as well as any sniper characters that you might want to play. Wouldn't be shocked to see Ashes come out on this one alongside the Sojourn. Maybe a Widow if Chronic and Jazza are feeling it. Uh, both of them, at least if uh, King's Row was any indication, do enjoy the sniper character. Yeah, I mean, they've been popping off with the secondary fire of uh, Soldier throughout this entire series. So, I mean, hey, why don't you just stick with a uh, fully hit scan character with uh, the Widowmaker? And that's what we're seeing from both uh, Chronic and Jazza right now. Yes, a Widow duel 1v1 in Overwatch 2. If Chronic stays on it, Chronic might not stay on it, to be in all fairness. You could very easily play the Sojourn as well with the rest of the comp paradise are showing. But I really want to see it, Joker. I want to see uh, the Widow 1v1 in Overwatch 2 between Jazza and Chronic. Both these hit scans have been trading blows throughout these first two maps. And, but this is a battlefield that we haven't quite seen either of them go toe-to-toe -to -toe on. It is, of course, important to note that there is a distinct... Uh, distinct difference in the other DPS on both sides. Glacial's gonna be running the Hanzo to go for sort of a double shield composition, while Frost is going for more of the all-rounder pick in, in the Genji. Yeah, as um, one of these two, uh, it's gonna be obviously on the back of these two snipers to find the picks into the favor for Sleepover Party, and well, there it is, yet again, Jazza starting things off for Sleepover Party to most likely win them this fight, is they're gonna have to just save out, wait for this uh, respot of Chronic. Am I hallucinating here, or did Paradise play a sub? Because Frost wasn't in before, it was Sloth. Oh no, Frost, yeah. Yeah, Frost is, a, Frost is actually a sub in right now, and is actually making their presence known very early on in this one. You're able to dive in the back and take out Jazza. 
That huge pick indeed is now they're gonna walk forward. Valencia has found three in this fight. It's just Emma left here and they're gonna just try to get away with their life. They're down to 30 HP. They've got that support passive, but no, they're not gonna stay alive for much longer. Yeah, and that's actually a huge fight win because Paradise are going to start getting that uh, cart around that big old U-turn around the mall. That's one of the hardest spots for the defense to push through, and you're already almost there. Just gotta win this next fight with the rest of Sleepover Party set up on this high ground, and you're basically home free for one of the toughest part of the map. Yeah, as they are gonna get the recontest in for Sleepover Party, um, as the Greta Flux just come out, but it's, it's gonna fight some value. That is gonna be, yet again, Paradise uh, Esport winning this fight out. My goodness, what a quick run through point A, a point that is usually extremely defensive-sided, but Paradise just made it look like a cakewalk, and now you have the opportunity to push up extremely far while someone is back on, on the point getting some early picks, uh, some early uh, point progress here. Paradise have pushed up completely to try and keep things, keep them away from the point for as long as possible. I mean, Sleepover Party are going to start things off uh, winning this fight out pretty much with off the back of that Gravitic Flux from Jishua. They're going to continue to push forward, look for the stragglers, but... Uh, oh, and they're going to force out the Transcendence here. That's a very interesting play coming in from Goob. Uh, I don't know uh, how... Uh, but, I mean, hey, it's going to turn them <laughs> back into the favor. Jassa is out of this fight now. The uh, Dragon Blade is out. Frost is going to go down, however, thanks to that Transcendence keeping everyone up and healthy for Sleepover Party as still looking good for uh, Sleepover Party to win this out. Emma getting their uh, Chronic out as um, yeah, Sleepover Party are going to win this fight, it seems. Sleepover Party won the fight, but it was a five ultimate fight for them. It's an extremely expensive fight. Sure, it's one they needed to win to try and stop the momentum of Paradise here. Now they have to try and get up this hill with Paradise raining shots from Jazza and Glacial down on them. So I think it is worth it, but Sleepover Party now in a position where they really don't have anything to work with for this next fight. And Valencia is just 15% away from that gravity flux. Yeah, as I uh, need are going to try to get these fights underway as a nice rock does come through not going to find much value uh, from it however as the gritted flux does come on board and frost has taken out jishu it's going to be huge no more tank on the board for a sleepover party jazza is going to find reverse and it's huge another pick coming in from the widowmaker of sleepover party but it's going to be a little too late three picks come in rapid succession for paradise as a pause does come oh, through now. God. That sucks. We actually saw uh, it was Goop who disconnected on the side of Paradise. And while you did uh, get, um, sorry, while you did, well, you pretty much guaranteed second point here, having to reset the old charge on one of your supports, especially the Zenyatta, that, that's a rough one. You're, you're going to want to have that old charge back if you push into point C. Yeah, um, it's definitely going to be difficult to uh, reset that ultimate coming forward. As, um, yeah, I mean, um, oh, I guess we're going right back in uh, very quickly. Uh, Emma does go down late. Uh, they're going to try to get a recon, uh, stay contested for as long as they possibly can, but it's just Jishua left. The respawns have come back now, uh, but now uh, Jishua going to get felled by the headshot of Chronic. Still. It's looking good. The uh, side of Sleepover Party might be able to hold on. No, not for much longer, as that is going to be finally Paradise Esports taking that fight. That was a little scary, though, because Goop not only got uh, their ult charge reset, but had to slowly float your way back into the fight from spawn. You're without that all-important Discord orb. But Paradise managed to pull through and do so without using any more ultimates, which means even though you'll lose that Transcendence Charge, you do have the other four ultimates coming up very soon, as long as you can sustain through the Gravity Flux from Jishua. Yeah, and they, they are able to do so thanks to a versus, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Immortality Field there. Uh, Jazza is going to take out Goob, so this does uh, seem to be into the favor of Sleepover Party for the time being. 
um, as this fight is just kind of uh, at a standstill. Yeah, and as long as it is at a standstill, I think Sleepover Party are okay with that because there is no more progress being made on the point. Both Chronic and Jazz are able to get uh, picks off on this fight, but uh, Chronic was able to get their opposing number, which means Chronic has pretty much free reign until Jazza comes back into the fight. The Transcendence is going to be on the board here uh, to push them forward, push them back as well. Um, as no one's still gonna find anything, but it is gonna be Jazza yet again. The Dragon Strike does come through to uh, try to separate the squad, and it does work. They've taken out the main tank of Jishua, but Glacial finds three in that fight, coming back strong for the side of Sleepover Party. And in a comp that wants to kind of bunch up there in that fight on that corner, like Paradise did, that is nice work there from Glacial, recognizing the opportunity for the Dragon Strike and making it happen. Sleepover Party are set up so well on this third point, and it feels like Paradise are stumped on how to get past it. Frost has swapped back over onto the Genji, but it's going to take a little bit of time before you build up that blade and get some really good value out of it. Yeah, as they're gonna look to go forward here. Reverse does have this amp matrix to start things out with, and they're going to use it early on, but is gonna be popping that Gravitic Flux of their own, and that's gonna win them that fight all right. As uh, Sleepover Party yet again winning these fights, as uh, Frost does take down Gunther, trying to 1v, uh, 2v1 there, as uh, but Jishua is gonna get take out the Genji now. So while that was happening, Paradise did get a little more uh, push onto the point. It's now to the point where I think comfortably, if Paradise are able to get one more fight win, they should be able to finish the map. But with 50 seconds left on the clock, this is really the only chance to do it. And you'll lose Chronic. Jazz are coming up huge in the little duel exactly when you need them to. And now Paradise has got to try and figure out how to get into this fight, how to engage. You have the Transcendence, but you don't have a Widowmaker. Yeah, that's huge indeed, and uh, we just saw Glacial popping in some uh, headshots as well of their own. Maybe not getting the head sh uh, the kill, but still, the damage is going to be uh, able to keep the uh, the fight into the favor of Sleepover Party for as long as they can. Uh, as Frost is going to try to push it, but you know, you're know you going down that tight alley. There's no way to get away from Jazza on that Widowmaker. As... This does seem like Sleepover Party have the upper hand. The Gravitic Flux has come out from Valencia to try to turn it back. They've gotten the pick onto Jishua, but Emma and Jazza find two huge picks going forward as Jazza is now on the day of the shooting range looking for headshots going forward. The Transcendences are out for both of the Zens, but it is Jazza yet again on the shooting range finding oh three picks of their own to win the fight out. I mean, look at this vantage point that Jazza has. Has three, uh, three looks over the whole fight. The only cover that Paradise really have now that they're forced to be on the cart is the cart itself. Other than that, they are basically at Jazza's mercy and is basically just able to play aim labs for a little bit there, hitting shot after shot after shot to really uh, close it down for Sleepover Party and get themselves their win condition. At this point now, Paradise have to better Sleepover Party on their defense or their contender's run is going to come to an end right here, right now. And I don't know about you, Joker, but I would love to see a fourth map of Overwatch in this series because it has been so entertaining. Yeah, I definitely would too. I'd like to see uh, a push game mode. I, I know it's not everyone's favorite, but hey, it's always fun to see something new. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, this is all uh, Sleepover Party's, uh, it's Sleepover Party's map to lose now. As you said, they, they've got their point where they need to push it to. And it's looking good for them. I, but we've seen a lot of times there's been full uh, holds on that third point. It is just so linear when you go into that uh, that little area where the cart was just last. So it's very difficult to push forward. Uh, we'll see if uh, Paradise can replicate the defense uh, we saw from Sleepover Party there. Oh my gosh, what a shot from Chronic out of spawn to immediately open things up here for Paradise. And now, of course, Sleepover Party, they have much less lethality to this first push here. 
Uh, but, of course, Jazza is going to be back in the fight pretty quickly. That is the advantage of having the spawn point right away. But Chronic with a quick 20% on the ult charge to start off this uh, defense. Yeah, and I mean... Uh, Chronic's always going to have the upper hand here as long as Jazza has to go into the sight lines of the Widowmaker, uh, of the defending Widowmaker, as Chronic yet again just going to be able to find the shots they need. Uh, the defending Widowmaker just has so oh much more uh, space to work with as we're seeing right now, finding four picks in this first fight. I mean, you're absolutely right that Chronic has the advantage as far as the vantage point the defending Widowmaker has. You still gotta hit those shots. And Chronic is absolutely on fire right now. I'm not sure if they've missed. And already 80% to that infra site just shows how much value Chronic has had basically solo carrying this first fight. Yeah, uh, they definitely are. They definitely are indeed. But now Jeshua is going to be able to find the space and take out Frost. It's going to be huge. Uh, a lot less uh, uh, long range damage going to be coming out from Paradise. So Jazza might be able to get better angles here going forward, looking to uh, take out their Widow counterpart. Yeah, Chronic is looking pretty good. Now you kind of have those uh, road barriers to hide behind some much needed cover for the attacking Widowmaker in this scenario Ooh. and is immediately able to find value to take out the Baptiste. Yeah, it's going to be huge now. Jazz is going to be able to have this upper hand because uh, uh, Chronic is going to be hiding behind. Jishua is finding so much value as well in the front line as Sleepover Party, no, Sleepover Party find the first point in their favor. Yeah, Sleepover Party, almost as quickly as Paradise did it, are able to get past one of the toughest defensive strongholds in Overwatch 2, and they're able to do so without using any ultimates, which means Jishua already has that Gravitic Flux available. Glacial is coming up on that Dragon Strike very soon. That's a pretty lethal combo if you want to use it. Jazz is almost at that uh, the Amper side as well, but Valencia is going to try and be aggressive with this one. Yeah, not going to find much value. However, the team was not there as that's going to be a huge ult in response from Jishua. They're going to be able to take them out from the sky. And I mean, hey, they're going to be able to push forward. The Transcendence now going to be used to try to stabilize, but you can't heal through a headshot from Jazza as Chronic goes down. As that is going to be a huge uh, fight win yet again for Sleepover Party as they're looking do dominant yet again. So patient from Sleepover Party as well, able to just calmly sustain through the gravity flux of Valencia and win the next fight and take point B with just the opposing gravity flux from Jishua. Look at all of the check marks from Sleepover Party. They have four ultimates, they have four minutes and 40 seconds. Paradise has four members on the coin because Frost is out and they are just 60 meters away from locking in a spot in the round of 16. Yeah, they are indeed, and uh, it's looking so good for them right now. They've got so many ultimates on the board here dividing. So many ultimates. Gunther used the uh, Ant Matrix oh. to piss off, but again, Jazza opens it up. You don't Paradise, need ultimates. Has, Paradise hasn't had five members for like so long, but Frost is finally able to get a little bit of a response there. Takes out Jazza, but still, it's just an even fight. Sleepover Party will take this one, especially with the Transcendence. Yeah, they definitely will. The Dragon Strike is going to come out here. This should be the stabilization that Paradise need, but they're not going to find any picks off the back of it. As Emma, oh, no, they, they are going to finally get something. Uh, Emma got that pick. It's going to be finally Paradise getting a, uh, this upper hand and getting the stabilization they need on the defense. Crucially, though, Emma decides to hold on to that transcendence. She's been so patient with it so far, and this just might be the time with Sleepover Party only needing one fight to win this series and knowing that uh, the Gravity Flux is coming up soon from Valencia. Emma is going to have the ability to potentially help her team sustain through that one and get that final pick that will get them to the next round. Yeah, as uh, they're going to be walking now into the infra sites of Chronic, they're going to probably have to just wait this out. Uh, you're not going to want to walk into this, especially with the tight range that uh, the uh, uh, of Circuit Royal is uh, right at the moment. 
as uh, they're gonna try and now push in. That's gonna be huge. Goob is out of this fight before the Transcendence can be used as that's the Transcendence now on the board for Emma to go forward. And this is looking like it's the end of things. Chronic is gonna take out Jazza, but the overwhelming presence of Sleepover Party is on the point. It's Chronic just to the left. They're gonna try as they will. The Transcendence from Spawn to two, keep everyone up and healthy, but Glacier with a nice headshot coming through strong. The swaps to get back to point as quickly as possible, but it's still all Sleepover Party in the kill feed. The Wrecking Ball left on point as they can just deal with it. They've moved to the round of 16. Sleepover Party wins the map and wins the series and pushes forward in to the round of 16. And Sleepover Party, just like I said in the fight before, Emma is able to use the Transcendence to help keep Sleepover Party nice and healthy through the Gravitic Flux. You notice that Dishu and Valencia used their Gravitic Fluxes at just about the same time in that last fight. Sleepover Party had a trans, Paradise didn't. That was a difference maker in that last fight. A beautiful play from uh, Emma and the rest of Sleepover Party to take a 3-0 victory. But Paradise absolutely made them work for it every step of the way. Yeah, definitely. This is uh, Paradise team is definitely something to look forward to going into the future events of Contenders. Uh, they're uh, hopefully they don't um, just uh, you know uh, break apart like a lot of uh, tier two, tier three teams do after uh, a disappointing run. Please I wouldn't call. Good. I wouldn't can I wouldn't call this disappointing at all. You've got it a top thirty two finish of open division. Or sorry, not open division. Contenders here. Yeah. It's um, contenders. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, that's a, players, man. that's a, that's a good, um, that's a good result. And if this team can stick together, work on their, uh, work on the little things that they need to work on. I think we can see them going a little bit further and maybe in the winter series, if that's the, the next one. Yeah, I think paradise could absolutely do some damage if, uh, they really hunkered down and work on building up that synergy. And for the side of Sleepover Party, their ride is not quite over yet. They'll move on to the round of 16, where uh, I, the game on the other side of that bracket hasn't been decided yeah. yet. But I do see the number five seed, Altiora, uh, is most likely going to be the team that they're going to be facing up against. A full, a full tilt Consenders team uh, that is going to be quite the... It's going to be quite the journey, quite the game for Sleepover Party to try and get themselves into that all-important top eight. But uh, if anything, if this game showed us anything, it shows that they are up for the challenge. Yeah, I mean, that uh, that Altoria squad is uh, something to be uh, said. Uh, Magic Meatball, Halo, uh, it's going to be very difficult. But hey, they, they showed they were up to the task today, taking out Paradise. I, I'm excited to see what they can do forward. Especially uh, when we see, hopefully, we, uh, we're probably not going to see them tomorrow since we saw them today. But if we do, that's going to be a great series to watch. Uh, but I think that's really about it for us dividing. Yeah. I, 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 It was nice. Our one contenders cast. <laughs> uh, but we hey, we did it. We're here. We could we're say we can. Here. We could say we've casted contenders. But thank you all for watching. Make sure hey. Drop us a follow. Uh, Joker's rants have been dividing by zero there on Twitter, and as well as uh, our amazing prod uh, hippie, uh, hippie prod, I believe is his Twitter. Yeah, hippie underscore prod and uh, Lamal Laudy, who was our observer for the evening. Um, make sure to drop us a follow. See what we're doing. Thank you all for watching. Peace out. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and enjoy the rest of Contenders this weekend. Bye-bye.